something though. All right, let me introduce you first, Marianne Slick, uh, reading to us from uh, from Gaithersburg, Maryland. Uh, Marianne is a poet and good friend to poets in in the region of the Beltway, and uh, excited to have her on the show on the Poetry Channel. Marianne's going to read from a new chapbook that she's working on. Go ahead, Marianne. Great, thank you. Uh, the first poem is the title poem, Why We Never Tried to Find the Elms. Empty tobacco barns stood in fields beside the highway in mild light that seemed dim after summer out west. In the car, my mother was telling stories about her college, Our Lady of the Elms, just a few miles north and west of here. I knew her stories well, still, all these years we had never tried to find the elms. She had said it was tucked into a neighborhood with watered lawns and oak trees, with spruce houses, stained glass. It must have been so gracious to a girl who grew up behind Peter's garage and walked behind the tracks each day uphill the St. Bernard's. I knew. I had walked with Graham to church through the tunnel stench. In college, mom said she was happy to sleep on a cot in a room full of girls, to take classes on Saturday, to pretend to eat lukewarm mackerel every Friday. While the Dean of Discipline swept through the wartime dining hall. By 1987, the row of cots were long gone. The few nuns left wore pantsuits. With children, with students, they laughed over lunch. Every Friday, the cafeteria would serve slices of greasy Hamburg pizza that mom would have pretended to eat had we stopped by her old school. Bravo. Thanks. Good. Good. Next is um, shopping in the pandemic. Okay, here we are. Shopping in the pandemic. When I used to shop at Food Lion on the way home from yoga, I felt closest to my mother, clipping coupons, trying to buy only what was on sale. I'd pass up the Fuji apples for Golden Delicious, stock up on boxes of corn checks and cans of chicken noodle soup, even ignore the firm tofu that lingered in produce next to the greens that no one but the Chinese doctor buys. But the last time I shopped there, just before the years of masks, when my hair was short and I could fit into my clothes, even aspire to doing forearm plank, the short stout woman hugged the last 12 pack of toilet paper close before placing it with the other in her cart. Then she steered it down the aisle of empty shelves to grab dank greens and the last tofu as the Chinese doctor and I could only watch. Okay. And we'll finish up with uh, a Boston poem. First time at the Willow Jazz Club, 1984. Okay. November night long fallen, we too left the campus of synth pop, hurrying past bare maple trees to the coffin shaped club, one flight down from Ball Square's broken sidewalks. Your friend was playing bass that night. I recall his guest, Ted Curson, first shaven headed man I'd seen. He had driven up from Philly he announced the next song, Graft and Corruption, to our cheers, loud enough to drown out the jukebox 
at Foley's Bar and Grill next door, where West Somerville's finest drank. While younger white men played horn, bass, and drums, Kirsten, someone's dad in a turtleneck, played cowbell. I still hear and feel its beat, hear the thin Thursday crowd cheer him on. Looking for the song on YouTube, I find only a young, almost clean-shaven trumpeter who plays Tears for Times Gone, Tears for Songs Lost, for his friend Eric, who had died. Okay. Thank you very much, Marianne Slick. Three fine poems from a, a book a collection. I'm looking forward to reading very much. Great. And um, welcome again to the Poetry Channel. All the best to you. I'm going to 